All right, guys. Uh, next, for uh, like six So, as we discussed, that uh, in this, uh, in in phylum Codata, we have three sub phylum, um, sub phyla, I understand. Um, the first one being sub phylum. Eurocodata. So that's the one we will be beginning with. So the Eurocodata, these uh, or they include the tunicate. And they are relative, and they are relative. So, I mean, commonly this phylum is referred to as the tunicate. Okay, that's that's like a, the common name for this for this phylum. And then they are sessile animals with a thick covering called a tunic. That's how they 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 get their name from. They have this thick covering called a tunic. And that's why they are called the tunicate. So these animals are sessile. Okay. So we 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 we, we spoke about the char the codate characteristics that you will find in all codate animals. And in this image here, you can see um, that you can find all these characters, these coding characters. The notal code is there, the dorsal nerve code is there, the post anal tail is there, and the pharyngeal Kills it there. Okay. So this this structure here, this is actually uh, a juvenile one, juvenile tunicate, so a larval tunicate. And then during its larval stage, you can see that it's free swimming, free swimming. So it's not yet attached on the substance. But the adult form is sessile, and you can see this one. So this mouth here, it attaches itself with this, with this space here on the substrate. And then it undergoes this twist curve, okay. and then it, it, it Comes like this when it's old, when it's when in a doubt. All right. So an adult form has an incurrent siphon to mouth. So this is a mouth with incurrent siphon, incurrent opening, meaning material, whatever material, water enters through this incurrent siphon. Then it enters in, through this atrium. And then it moves out through the excrement siphon. The water moves up to the excrement together with waste. The tunicates are developed, I mean, are revealed as codidate, as codidate, sorry, by their tadpole like larvae, which bear a notal cord, a dorsal nerve cord, chill sleep, and post anal state. As you can see in this, this is the juvenile, the larvae stage. 
It has all these coding characteristics. But you can see now in this adult form that you don't see the, the post anal chain. It's not there. It's lost. So in its transition to the adult form, the tunicate loses its obvious codate characteristic. Its tail is lost, its motor cord is lost, nerve cord is absorbed into the body, leaving only the gill sac, the gill basket as a clue to its codate relationship. So all the other, all the other three uh, coded characteristics are lost as the juvenile uh, metamorphosize into an adult form. As it develops into an adult form, it loses all the other characteristics and is only left with this gene set as a clue to its coding relationship. So metamorphosis is this process here when the juvenile or when the larvae transition from a juvenile form, which is a free swimming larvae, and it becomes attached in the substrate, and then it changes its, its, its form, and it becomes a completely different organism. You can see this organism here is not the same as this one. That's because of this metamorphosis. Uh, when when an organism uh, changes its form into another form, so this one is free swimming with all the coded characteristics. Then it, uh, it attaches itself on a substrate. Then you can see that the natural cord is becoming reduced. The natural cord is becoming reduced. The nerve cord is also reducing. The tail is reducing. You can see the, the natural cord is de degenerating. Also the dorsal nerve cord and the tail and here the tail is completely lost, natural cord is lost, and the dorsal nerve cord is lost, and only the chill sex is, lost, is, 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 is left. Tunicates are filter feeders. So remember that we said we we'll discussed all the different uh, anatomical and ideological characteristics under relevant sections. So now we're discussing the feeding. So they are filter feeders, so they feed by filtering. And we know how this happens because we, we discussed uh, this feeding strategy under uh, invertebrates, last feeding strategy. So we know how, 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 how this technique occurs. The adult circulatory system is open. Okay. The pyora solonifera, the rock base. That's the one you see on the image there. And it's important to know the scientific name, the example, such as this one. And you can also 
find other when you do your own research, find other examples. And it's important to know the discipline of the As a lava, the tunicate has the pharyngeal gill slit, a neutral cord, and a dorsal nerve cord. So all these cultures are there as a lava. Eventually, the lava enters a transitional period in which it approaches the adult state. So this is when metamorphosis now occurs. The body form of the rather simple, the body form is rather simple and has no specialized uh, sensory devices. So the body form of the tunicate is, is simple and does not have any specialized uh, sensory devices as you will find in the later uh, classes. The tunicate maintains the, phar the pharyngeal gene split throughout adult life. So that's the only character that they maintain. And then the rest are not. Current, current of water are produced by cilia in the gene structure. Throwing water, I mean, throwing food particles into the digestive tract. Now, you know, again, you know this how cilia reaction assists in throwing, in creating a current that throws water into the body of the tunicate or of an organism. So, in this set here, there it, 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 it is lined with cilia, <clears throat> and this cilia is beating, okay, it has this beat like rhythmic feet, which creates a current. This current throws in water through the in current siphon, and then through these slits, food particles are filtered and then sent to the digestive tract while the water exits through the excrement cycle. Respiration occurs as water exits through the body. You know that water has oxygen. So as the water comes in and out of the body, of the body wall. The animal also respires. Okay. So this is the structure, the lava, and the adult form. To the case. We're moving on to the to phylum cephalocordata. Cephalocordates include the lancelet. Okay, so please uh, do not confuse this. The urocordates, they, they, they are the trinity. The cephalocordates, they are the lancelet. Okay. So the lancelet, which resemble small fish-shaped coding. Lancelets are found in the shallow water along most coasts where they are used, where they usually lie partly buried in the sandy or muddy substance with only their anterior mouth and gene apparatus exposed. So they bury themselves on, 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 on sand or mud, and then expose only the amount and G apparatus for so, so that they can be able to feed. Okay, the notochord is prominent in adults and protrudes 
beyond the brain. The adult cephalocodate retain the gene fleet and develop dorsal tubular nerve cord. So in this crop or in this south phylum, now we see something which is different from what we learned in the previous on the last sub phylum, Eurocodic. <clears throat> Now, here we are told that the notal cord is prominent in adults. Remember that in the tunicate, we do not have the notal cord in the adult form. We said that all the cordage characteristics are lost as the larva transition from juvenile to adult, and only one characteristic is retained which was the gene set. But now we see that the notal cord is retained and is in fact prominent in the adult form and protrude, protrude, protrude beyond the brain, which means that it extends beyond the brain. The adult cephalocodate retain gene set, which is also the case in the tunicate, and develop a dorsal tubular nerve cord. Now, it is important to understand the wording of this sentence. It says the adult, which means that um, the adult retains the gill sac, which means that the larva stage, or the larva of the, the cephalocodic, they do have the pharyngeal gene. That's why they retain them. But now the adult devil, which means that in the in the juvenile or in the larva stage, there is no dorsal nerve cord, but only in the adult stage. So that's the most important distinction that we have to keep in mind. In the cephalocodate, the dorsal nerve cord, the dorsal tubular nerve cord only develops at the adult stage. Okay, so we know that uh, the adult stage has not a cord, it has chill it has dorsal nerve cord. So, this is a lung flap. You can see the pharyngeal gill split. You can see the notal cord, you can see the dorsal nerve cord, and the tail. So again, lancelets are filter feeders, just like the urocodes. They are filter feeders. Again, they are cilia lined. They are mouth cavity. So their mouth cavity is lined with cilia which creates a current that draws water through it. They feed on microscopic particles filtered out of the constant stream of water that enters the mouth and passes through the gill slit into an atrium that opens at the actual core. So they feed on microscopic particle as water is thrown in through the mouth, then it is, when it passes through the gel slit, it is filtered, the food particles or the microscopic particles are filtered, and then they enter into the atrium, and then waste is excreted through the atrial core. Okay. The water then moves through the pharynx where food becomes trapped in mucus. So in the pharynx, there's a mucus, and that mucus will then trap the food. This trapped food is delivered to the rest of the gut. In addition, segmentation is present by the fact that the muscles are segmentally arranged and the dorsal holonerve cord has 
periodic branching. Now, this is not a new thing. Uh, segmentation, and then the dorsal nerve cord having these periodic branches because of the, the muscles now are segmentally arranged. So you have these branches within and through the, the segmental unit. Lung nerves have a closed circulatory system. You might be asked in a test to differentiate. That's why I've been, as, as I go, I've been trying to differentiate between the tunicate and the lung nerves. Okay. Because they, these are the protocodes. So it's important to, to compare them. You, you will remember that I said the other it has a closed, I mean, an open circulatory system. So as we go, please keep in mind these similarities and differences between, between this uh, subfile, because I promise you, you will be asked that question in a test. The relationship between cephalocodate and vertebrae is best seen by comparing the lungs the lung leg to the prey, to the, to the lamprey, a primitive vertebrae. So now the, the lamprey are actually under the subphyla, sub, subphyla vertebrata. We will move, I think after this section, we'll move on to the lamprey. But they're just telling you that to be able to differentiate between the cephalocodate and vertebrates, you can compare these two organisms. So right now we focus on the lamprey, but then after this, we'll move on to the lamprey and we can make those distinctions. Then, subphylum vertebrata. Okay. Do you have any questions so far before before we move on? And guys, it is important as as I talk, as I go on talking, if there's anything you need clarity on or you're missing on something, please feel free to stop me and ask for clarity. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Yeah, you said lentils, but uh, lentils have a closed circulatory system. Which one have an open circulatory system? I didn't quite get that one. The tunicate. I was comparing the tunicate. I was comparing the subphylum urochordata and subphylum mm -hmm. cephalochordata. Yes. So, please be not confused when I say the tunicate. Remember, I said the tunicate is it's a common name for phylum urochordata. The lancelet is a common name for subphylum cephalocordata. So sometimes they just say the tunicate, sometimes they just say the, lan the, lan the lancelet. So the, the tunicate, they said that uh, it is, the adult form has an open circulatory system. Then here, and the <clears throat> subphylum cephalocodata, they, they said it has a closed circulatory system. So I was, as I go trying to make distinction or trying to distinguish between the urochordate and the cephalocodate. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Are you, is everyone happy? Did you all understand? Well, I'm not happy if, if, you not, if you do not respond. I want to know, are you, did you understand? 
the lecture or you were just confused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we understood. Okay, can I, can all those who understood raise their hand? Can all those who understood raise their hand? I'm sure you know how to raise your hand. I've been doing online lectures last semester. We don't have a hand, sir. You don't have a hand. Okay. Okay. And um, all right. Well, I'm happy if you understood. It's very important that you understand because you will be tested on this thing. You will be tested on this. So it's very, very important that you understand. So I'm going to stop recording this lecture now.